وللجدال تعتري الأحكام يحرم إن يقصد إن يقصد به الإفحام لجلبه غوائل الملاهي كالعجب والحقد وحب الجاه وقد رأى بعض ذوي البصائر الإثاء إن يكثر من الصغائر. As for debates and dialectics, they fall under the five rulings and are prohibited if silencing one's opponent is what is intended. The reason for this is that it engenders destructive matters that have been prohibited, such as contempt, envy, vanity, and love of position in the hearts of men. Indeed, some scholars of penetrating insight have even reckoned recurring disputation to be among the venal sins. Mm. Okay, so basically what he's saying is uh, jidal, which is argumentation. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا ضَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدْ هُدَى كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا أُوتُ الْجَدَلِ that people never go astray after they had guidance except it's replaced with argumentation. That that's actually a quality of people that are astray. They start arguing about everything and they can't agree on anything. And that's why if you know certain qawaid faqiyya, like one of them is al uh, muhtarafihi la yunkaru. If something's, if there's disagreement about something, you shouldn't uh, get into arguments about it. The mujma'alay is what we all agree on. So when you have differences of opinion, do we practice nus sha'ban or not? You can clarify what your position is, but don't attack people who take another position when it's a valid position. Do we celebrate the mawlid or not? These are khilaf issues. And you can present your position, that's fine. Say, look, the salaf didn't practice it, here's why we shouldn't practice it, but we recognize there's a khilaf here. And other, you know, and show the two arguments, right? And then leave people alone. But to go and try to stop people from practicing things that are disagreed on, that leads to sectarianism, it leads to division, it leads to hatred, and, and it splits an ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the ummatukum ummatan wahida, wa ana rabbukum fattaqoon, right? I'm your Lord. Don't forget who's your Lord. You know, Shakespeare said, it is idolatry to make the service greater than the God. Sometimes people, Islam becomes what they're worshipping. All these rules. I mean, the Prophet ﷺ was very generous with people about, even when they broke the rules, he was very generous. The man who slept with his wife during Ramadan, just look at that hadith, how he dealt with him. The people that were new in Islam, he just told them, eat the meat and say, Bismillah and eat the meat. Aisha said, why are you telling him that? Right? Because what you put in your mouth is so important. He said, they're new Muslims. Just leave them alone. This is hikmah. This is wisdom. But people want, somebody becomes Muslim, they want them to be like Sahaba the next day, even though they're not like Sahaba. Right? But is this what they expect? No, let them come in with all their faults and blemishes. Right? So... Uh, what he's saying is that, and then Imam Malik radiallahu anhu said, "Ma kan al jidalu min al dini fi shay." Argumentation has nothing to do with our religion. A man came to Imam Malik radiallahu anhu once, and he said, "Jadini, you know, I want to argue with you." And Imam Malik radiallahu anhu said, "Okay, so you beat me? What?" He said, "You follow me." He said, "And I beat you." He said, "I follow you." He said, "What if a third person comes and he beats both of us?" He said, "Then we follow him." He said, you're going to be on a new religion every day. See you later. Right? I mean, people discover, you know, so, oh, I found this new hadith. You know, this stuff's all been worked out. You're not going to discover anything new. Right? You might find something out, but the, the Maliki school knew about it. The Hanafi school knew about it. The Shafi'i school, they all knew about it. They've, all, they've been debating this stuff for centuries. Why are you reinventing the wheel? So that's, you know, it's very dangerous, all of this argumentation. and uh, But they go under the five rulings, right? Ta'atari al-ahkam. It can be wajib. Sometimes you have to argue. And, and the uh, Nuh alayhi uh, salam, the, there are people complained that he was always arguing with them. He was trying to save them. So jidal can be to manifest the truth. It can be uh, mandub, it can be mubah. Even they say that for students it's good to debate, but they have to know the rules of debating because so it, it sharpens their mind. 
so that they can make arguments. Imam uh, Shafi'i radiallahu anhu said that he never got into a debate except he didn't care who won. مَا بَرَيْتُ أَغَرَبْنِي خَصْمِي أَوْ غَرَبْتُ He said, I could care less whether I won the debate or the one I was debating with won the debate. For him, what was important was the truth manifested. That's uh, somebody who doesn't have ego invested in the debate. But a lot of people don't. So, um, and then he says, uh, because it brings all of these problems, like hiqad and ujab, you, you get resentment, you get things. So, you, you know, in, in the Babah, he said, حُكْمَ الْجِدَالْ تَابِعُونِ قَصْدِ صَاحِبِهِ It follows the intention of the one who wants to argue. فَإِنْ قَصَرَ التَّعَنُّتْ وَالْعِنَادِ if, if they're just intent obstinacy and they want to uh, just be fanatic about their position, and they're still arguing against the truth after it's manifested, or something false, it's pro- prohibited in all those things if, if you're just arguing for the sake of argumentation. And Imam Malik radiallahu anhu uh, said, "Inna ahla biladina," meaning Al Madina, the, the great ulama of Medina, "yakrahun al jidal wal bahth wal nazar." They didn't like any types of debates. Illa fi ma tahtuhu amal, duna ma sabiru al atiqad, unless it was a fiqh issue that they were trying to resolve. If it was about aqidah, they didn't like it. The, don't debate aqidah. Aqidah is what it is. You get into debates about it, you'll end up saying something about God. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّي الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطْنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشِرِكُ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّرْ بِهِ سُلْطَانُ وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ To say about God what you don't know. That is the worst thing that you can do. It's worse than shirk. Ibn Qayyim says that he began by talking about itham because that's the least of things. Right? And then baghi and then shirk and he ended with saying about God what you don't know. That's the worst thing you can do. So people should have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's, that's what he's saying. That if there's action or something like that, then it's a good thing. And then he says, when you read manfa'atan fahuwa ala, that, this isn't in your text. Ala hasabiha wa karihu mala wala. So if it, if you want benef, benefit, if he wants benefit, then it's permissible, but you have to look at what way cost benefit analysis. But it's makru if there's no benefit or harm. It's just makru to do it because of the problems that it leads to. And then uh, some of the people of, uh, of uh, you know, inner sight. Basira is to the intellect what the eye is to the, 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 the vision is to the eye. So basira is the thing that enables you to see things clearly, uh, intellectually. And so the ulama say that argumentation, if you do it a lot, it's considered a sagira. It becomes a sagira for you to be doing It's sinful. And we know there are argumentative people. Everybody knows them. There's just people that they like to argue. And abghadu uh, rijal and Allahi al al khasim. The in the Sahih, the the Prophet said the people most odious to God are people that love to argue. Mula, right? And they argue uh, just for the sake of argumentation. Allah hates those people. They're odious to Him. So you, if you have that personality, Safrawi is an argumentative personality. So if you're choleric by nature, you'll, you'll tend to, to incline towards argumentation. Sanguine and phlegmatic don't really like to argue generally. But the choleric is argumentative. And the ulama tend to be choleric by nature. So it's something they, students of knowledge have to be very careful about that. Because it is part of the nature. And... Uh, it can become like a real sickness of the heart.